Hey everyone, it's Scott here from the Fragrance Channel. Scott, you're a Matico. Welcome. How's everybody doing? Well, if you haven't heard by now, guys, I'm just now getting over COVID-19. Slowly but surely, slow and steady wins the race. We're finally gonna get over this thing. I'm not all the way there, guys. My sniffer's still kinda not there, and my taste buds are slowly coming back. So I didn't think it would be fair to do a video, you know, reviewing a fragrance when I'm not all the way there. So I'm trying to figure out creative ways that I can do videos and bring you guys content. So if you haven't been able to tell from the thumbnail already, what I wanted to do is seven fragrances that are on my wish list. I know we've all got them. I know we have fragrances that we dream about getting if we get that paycheck or, and uh, so if you're like me, you probably keep lists of designer fragrances you want, of niche fragrances. Well, these happen to be seven niche fragrances for the most part. I think you, we could debate on one of these, uh, give or take, but for the most part, we'll call them luxury fragrances, boutique fragrances that I really, really want on my list and I'm looking forward to getting. So if you wanna find out which ones those are, just stick with me on the other side of the break. <music> guys, like I said, my name is Scott. I am from the fragrance channel, Scott Aromatico. Welcome to all you first time visitors. I am so glad you stopped by. You were in the right place because here we just talk about all things fragrances and we have a lot of fun doing so. To all you who have been with me for a really long time, thank you so much for sticking with me this far. It's been an up and down roller coaster. It's been quite a journey. We're almost at a year. We'll be at a year and sometime in September, I think mid-September. So it's been really fun. It's been a learning process and I couldn't have asked to do it with a better group of people. Thank you so much. So without talking it too much to death, guys, let's just go ahead and talk about the stars of the show, which are the fragrances. And like I was saying earlier uh, in the beginning, this is seven luxury fragrances or boutique fragrances or hard to get fragrances for some of these that are on my list that I really, really want this year. I'm gonna rectify getting these fragrances. I honestly don't even know why I don't own some of these. Um, it might just be, you know, finances. I might see other things and spend my money there and then forget about them. But all seven of these fragrances have been on my list for a while. So let's talk a little bit about them. And then when I'm done, or any time during this video, feel free to comment down below and tell me what are some of your favorite fragrances. I don't care how many there are. If you wanna do a top 10, if you wanna do your top three, I'd love to know what are some of your highly sought after fragrances and let's talk about it. Um, tell me what you think of my list. I'd love to hear from you. Now, it is that time of year, you know, we're getting into the fall, we're getting into the cooler weather and then that leads to winter. It takes a long time for winter to come in South Carolina. It stays warm here for quite a while but I do love this time of year because I love wearing a lot of, you know, boots and I love wearing the jeans and the flannels and I really, really love my gourmand fragrances. Man, I, I something special about a nice gourmand fragrance and you're gonna find that most of these fragrances I've picked are gourmandish in nature. So without any further ado, let's jump right in and I'll tell you the top seven fragrances that are on my list to get this year. So. The first one, you guys are no stranger to this niche company. They are highly sought after. Their prices reflect that. They're kind of on the high side and it's why I really haven't pulled the trigger, but I am gonna rectify them to save my money. Now, most of these fragrances I'm gonna tell you about, I've had a decant of just about every single one of them with the exception of two. And this first one just happens to be one that I have not had a decant and that's from the house of Killian and I am really super excited. I want to jump on the hype train. I would really love to own a bottle of Angel Share. Man, I first of all, I love the way, I love the presentation. I love how it looks like, you know, a nice little crystal of whiskey. Man, that, that really appeals to me. It looks really, really cool. Now, I will say I have tried one from Killian and that was um, Back to Black. And I really liked it. It was a nice honey-based fragrance. Not one of my favorites, but when I read the ingredients on this one with the cognac, let's see, cinnamon, tonka, some oak, praline, vanilla, and sandalwood to give it that creaminess, that really sounded like it would be something right up my alley. Now, I don't wanna blind buy this, so to speak, but I have gotten my nose on a clone. I know Sammy Anders makes a nice clone of this, and I, if it's anywhere near what Angel Share is like, then I know I would definitely want it. 
and uh, who knows, I may go ahead and buy a decant of that before I actually pull the trigger. But it is one I am really, really curious about, especially because of the presentation. And I do like that that praline intrigues me, mixed with that vanilla and that nice booziness on the top that I hear it has. That's something I would really be intrigued about. So Angel Share is definitely on my list. What do you guys think of that one? I know it's been hyped up a lot, but I would love to have it for this, this coming uh, cooler month. So. The next one on my list is another another one that I have not been able to get my nose on. Um, I don't even have a decant and I don't even think I have a clone of this one anywhere in my collection. Um, but I do own three others from this collection. It is Googler, the Angel Men series or the Amen series. And I've got three already in this series. I've got Pure Malt, Pure Havane, and Orange Zest. And I would really, really love to own pure tonka now i know what you're thinking the prices on these are super high because they're discontinued but guys i really want to get a hold of this because every single one that i own the three that i mentioned the quality is so good and we can argue and say yes yeah, god these are designer i understand that but man the quality is niche quality they're so luxurious they're such beautiful fragrances at least the three i've mentioned so far so i'd like to finish off the collection and get pure coffee um, get Pure Tonka and some of the other ones, guys. I'm really excited because the three I own, like I said, Pure Mall, Pure Havane, and Orange Zest are just so decadent and so amazing. The ingredients in this is just sound so good with the mint, lavender, tonka, coffee, cacao, vanilla, patchouli, guys. That Man, that just sounds something that'd be right on my alley. And like I said, I'd like to add another bottle of this to my collection. The prices are a little bit on the ridiculous side on eBay and Macari, but uh, who knows, maybe when I get my tax return or if my ship comes in or I win the lottery, I might pull the trigger on a bottle. Tell me what you think. Have you got any of you guys ever uh, smelled Pure Tonka or got your nose on it? I'd love to know what it's like. Maybe I can pick up a decant somewhere. I'll have to keep my eyes open. All right, next one on my list, I definitely have a decant of it. I've actually had two decants of it. And I love this fragrance through and through. Every time I put it on, my wife is ready to pounce. She loves this fragrance. I love this fragrance. I have a couple of fragrances that are actually clones as well. I got one from Sammy Anders, and this is none other than Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. There's not a whole lot I can say about it, except it's just absolutely smooth. It's gorgeous, it's cherry, it's vanilla, it's delicious, I love it, and it works perfect for this time of year. So guys, that's definitely one I want on my collection. It's a little bit on the high side, you know, anywhere from 200 to 300, but who knows, maybe on discounters I can find it for a good price. Uh, I'll have to keep my eyes open. If you guys have any good tips, let me know. Um, next one is a brand new fragrance that came out this year. It came out in 2021. I love the House of Goldfield and Banks. Almost everything I try from them is absolutely amazing. Um, and I've, I've tried quite a few and I've tried this one as well. This is uh, Silky Woods by Goldfield and Banks. Guys, it's so good. It's, it's just delicious. It's got the vanilla, the oud, the sandalwood, tobacco, musk. Um, you name it, it's got cinnamon in this one, guys. It's absolutely beautiful, blended beautifully. There's something so gourmandish about it, you know, kind of that edible, delicious, sensual date night, but the tobacco in it is so gorgeous as well. And I was so glad that I got a decant. It's, it's definitely on my must own list. And I don't think it's too bad. I think it's under 300 bucks. Um, and so I definitely want to add this to my list this year. Okay, got it. The next fragrance I'm talking about has been on my list for a while. It is so decadent. It's also in that designer vein. It's a designer uh, company trying to get into that boutique fragrance uh, genre. And that's none other than Yves Saint Laurent or YSL Tuxedo. I really want that fragrance. I've had a couple decants. The decants are absolutely amazing. I have a clone from Sammy Anders. Guys, and you, also if you know about uh, Moustache, Moustache is another excellent clone, but it's not all the way. If you own YSL and you compare it to Moustache, it's not all the way. So I actually want this fragrance really, really bad. And I've heard some bad news that they're getting ready to discontinue this one. But good news, guys, I actually ordered this one. and I am super excited to be getting this one soon in the mail. I am looking forward to it. I can't wait to own Yves Saint Laurent's tuxedo, guys, because it is so glamorous. It is so smooth. It is so decadent. The nice juicy bergamot on the top, the violet, 
guys. There's uh, black pepper in this one. There's the bourbon vanilla. It's just amazing, guys. So this one is so beautiful. I can't wait to get it. It wears so decadent. It wears so luxurious. It is definitely on my must-own list, and I'm actually going to have this one soon. So this one, I'll be able to cross off the list. What do you guys think about Sales Tuxedo? I know it's kind of high price, but it is a really, really, really good fragrance. And that's what this is about. You know, I'm not... You know, I'm not looking for clones or I'm not looking for cheapies on this one. I'm actually talking about a list of fragrances that you know is very overpriced, very high, very decadent, very pricey, but you want it anyways. What are some of those fragrances that are on your list? For some of you, it might be Fragrance de Bois, um, like because I know they're up there. Maybe you've always wanted to try Clive Christian or whatever. Let me know down in the comments below. All right. So guys, the next one on my list is from the house of Bond number nine. And I've always, always wanted to have a full bottle presentation of Bleecker Street. Bleecker Street is an absolutely amazing bottle. I love the presentation. It's a cool, as you can tell, I'll put it up here on the screen. Absolutely amazing, cool bottle. It's just a fragrance that I've had for a while. I have a pretty nice size decant. I don't use it that much because I really like it. Now, I do have a clone or I do have an inspiration from Sammy Anders and I love that one. I don't mind spraying that one. But guys, I really would love to own a full bottle presentation. I wonder what some of y'all think about Bond number nine. What are your feelings? Because I don't see a lot of you guys talking about it out there. I see some bottles, you know, on Instagram, but I don't see a lot of people reviewing it. So I wonder if their time has come and gone. But all I can say is, is I would really love to own a full bottle presentation on Bleecker Street. That blueberry note is the star of the show. You know, the woody nuances. And the violet, the cinnamon, the oak moss, patchouli amber, um, caramel, vanilla, another fragrance that's very gourmandish in nature. It's definitely on my list, guys. I'd love to hear what some of your thoughts are. And what do you what is your favorite bond number nine fragrance? Okay, guys, last but not least, um, is Zoologist. Zoologist just happens to be one of my all-time fragrance houses. I love them, guys. They're one of my favorites for so many reasons. That's why I love niche fragrances. You know, zoologists is so cool because they do so many cool things They didn't, and they do them right, you know. They care about the animals. They care about the planet. Um, I love the art. I love the story. I love the way these fragrances transport you. And I have sampled so many zoologist fragrances. I almost feel guilty because of how much I like them. And I haven't bought, bought a bottle. I haven't pulled the trigger yet. So Camel is definitely on my list. I hope to get that done this year before the end of the, the new year at least and get a full bottle of Camel, and who knows, maybe something else as well. Um, I'm testing, currently testing out some other ones from Zoologist, so we'll see. But right now, Camel is one of my favorites, guys. It is so decadent. I love the dry fruit uh, note that's in this, guys. It is so good. Um, you've got all kinds of things going on in this with the amber and the saffron, cinnamon, cedar. There's some oud. You know, uh, musk, vanilla, sandalwood, guys. There's just something about this fragrance that is so boozy. And that's not really listed in the notes, but it's just got this nice boozy quality. Um, I believe there's some dates in this as well. So this fragrance is just so amazing and so well done. Like I said, I love the graphics. I love the drawings of it. And it just really transports you to another time and place. I do think about being in, you know, the dry desert air in a spice market somewhere over in the Middle East you know, just enjoying some amazing culture over there. So that's kind of what comes to mind when I think of that fragrance. There's some other ones on my list from Fragrance Dubois and whatnot, but those are my seven, and I'd love to hear what are some of your favorite fragrances. Uh, let, let me know down in the comments down below, what do you think about my list? And uh, what are you looking forward to getting for the holidays, for Christmas, and this coming new year? What are you looking to get that you've always wanted? I'd love to hear from you guys down below in the comments. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me. We're almost to 1,000. I think we've got like 11 more to go. I cannot wait. I am super excited. I'm trying to get to 1,000 in my first year doing YouTube. That would be a really big milestone for me. It was a goal I set, and we're almost there. So, guys, sky's the limit. I owe each and every one of you a big thank you. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to doing an international giveaway with you guys of something that I believe in, something that will be really, really fun. Uh, and exciting, a fragrance that I really, really like and enjoy. So um, I think I've got something in mind, and now it's just a matter of going, hitting the thousand, and then pulling the trigger, guys. Listen, give me a thumbs up if you've got any value from the video whatsoever today. Tell all your friends and family about the video, share it with them. And guys, remember, remember to always be yourself as long as yourself smells good, and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao, peace, love y'all.